Timbaland is really well known for working um, like an owl. He's a nocturnal creature, and he likes to work it from midnight till 7 in the morning. So uh, when I was in Miami recording Loose, I was getting used to these long, late hours. And Tim and I would have this weird schedule of kind of getting to the studio and lounging around and listening to music and then getting tired and waking up again. And in the midst of this all, there was this huge screen in the studio one day, and on it was um, the film The Wall by Pink Floyd, which is very trippy and very... <laughs> abstract and imagine sort of beats playing and watching the wall while you're kind of like in there jamming and uh you know it was about 3 a.m 4 a.m and um I remember I had this sort of hooded sweatshirt around me because I was getting really tired I felt really cozy and Tim said oh you know you might as well go home you're not gonna write anything good at this time I know you you get tired at this time and that was like a challenge. It's like sort of sparring with Tim and I, <laughs> challenging each other. And, uh, and um, I was like, well, you know, like, give me the mic. Let's see, right? And we used to write in the, um, in the mix room, like right up against the board. Like I'd um, have a mic out and we'd have everything going on the speakers. You know, that's how we would write, really jamming. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, yeah, we were using all these effects on my voice. And I started singing, in the day, in the night, say here. And then it just... He was on his keys, Nate was on his keys, and it was just like the ghost came in the room and took over, you know? So that became Say It Right, and we had fun recording it. The process was cool, because actually, um, Demo, the mixer and engineer, um, and my husband, he actually, <laughs> my now husband, put all these microphones around me, like almost like four microphones to get the vocal sound that we got. All Good Things Come to an End is another track off Loose, and it's um, one of my favorite moments on Loose, you know, the song and the video. I think um, that was sort of the, the song that kind of broke open the album sort of to the whole world and became really universal and very pop in that moment. And the writing process was cool. Uh, I, you know, Tim, at, you know, was listening to lots of Coldplay in the studio at the time, and um, the MTV Awards was in Miami that year. And uh, I was backstage at the MTV Awards, I believe. I think Tim and I went together that year. And, and I ran into Chris Martin from Coldplay, who I'd known from time, from a long time ago, festivals, UK, touring, everything like that. And I bumped into him, and, and I told him I was working with Timbaland. And Chris's eyes lit up like, Timbaland, wow, you know, I'd love to meet him. And I said, well, how long are you in town? You know, come by the studio. So he came by the next night, and uh, Tim was, was uh, equally excited to meet him. And the two of them... We're almost starstruck, you know, of each other in the studio because they'd never met, and there was kind of like, no one was making any music, and I kind of like, you know, turn your turn your keyboards on, put on your guitar, let, let's do this, you know. They started jamming, and we started. Um, I don't know, it was a great jam. It was another awesome jam, jam of a lifetime. And uh, Chris, um, what? How, how did he come up with the idea for the hook? He, I think he was like, he ended a jam, and he's like, oh well. All good tunes come to an end, or all good jams come to an end. He went, all good jams come to an end. And I'm like, oh, that's a great hook. You know, what we, what we thought was the end of a jam became the beginning of a song. And so he wrote this, uh, all good jams come to an end. And then and we're like, that's a great idea. And then he all do all good things come to an end, you know. And then, um, and then yeah, and then flames to dust, lovers to friends. I started, you know, uh, singing with him. And then I had the horrible difficult task of writing verses the next day, you know, once the jam was over. So I, there were some musicians jamming, uh, playing guitars on another vibe the next day, and I just sat there and wrote verses that I thought would would um, complement the chorus. And yeah, it's, it's a fun tune. In God's Hands is a song that I wrote with Rick Knowles, who's an amazing writer who, who lives in Los Angeles. And um, him and I have a great connection. Um, he's really disciplined as a writer, and, and he uh, definitely brings out the best in me. And sometimes we write over beats and things, but that day I said, you know, just play your guitar and I'll sing. And God's Hands came out of nowhere, which sometimes the best songs just kind of present themselves and you don't have to overthink it. And God's Hands is about, you know, when you lose um, a love, you know, when you lose a great love or a relationship is over and you don't know where it went. It just kind of slipped through your hands and, and um, 
And I like that imagery, that it's back in God's hands. It's back where it started, you know? And I, I kind of, I don't usually write um, that, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, like that songs with that kind of imagery, like sort of like that, I guess it's it's really like a, um, I think it's it's a it's an interesting song, and I, I always thought it sounded like a country tune. You know, I always thought it sounded like the lyri the lyricism and the imagery kind of reminded me of this sort of storybook kind of co country tune, and that's why um, I invited um, Keith Urban to do a special version of In God's Hands, which does appear on the deluxe version of Best of Nelly Furtado for a lot of people that haven't heard it. And uh, Keith Urban loved the song right away when he heard it, um, and he's a great artist. He's like sort of like a country pop artist, and um, great voice, great tunes. And um, I thought he sounded great on it. So my, my country, um, country wishes and dreams came true. Broken Strings was like this great gift for me, you know, like a great, great opportunity. Um, James Morrison and I, we ha were on the same label, Polydor in the UK, and um, we had met at the Brit Awards the year that I went to and I won an award at the Brit Awards. He was sitting at my table, and we met, and he was so sweet. He came off as just such a sweet young guy with so much talent. I think his voice, he sort of sounds like a young Rod Stewart, like just so much, just this grainy, gritty, like soulful and strong voice. And he sent me the song, and I was flattered that he wanted me on it. I thought, wow, this is cool new territory for me, which is, um, I always like, you know, when something's new and different for me. So that's why I chose to do it. And um, he flew to Toronto, and uh, we had a great time in the studio. The demo he sent me was totally different than the, the way the song sounded when he got to Toronto, and he was actually kind of embarrassed. He was like, oh my gosh, they sent you the wrong version of the song, oh my god. But I ended up loving the new version just as much, and sang the vocals, and it um, ended up being this beautifully produced, epic track, just like so big sounding. and different than what was on the radio and almost like retro in a way, in a really cool way. And um, we, we've we've had an opportunity to sing it live at his show uh, at Wembley Arena in London recently. And it was like a really surreal experience. It had this, like, there, it, it's a magical tune and he, he sings with a lot of passion.